Oh yeah, we got a little stack battle going right here. <laughs> Just trying to resolve. Ooh. Today on Commander Replay, can we find a way to win with the single worst Boros commander, Anya the Merciless? Find out next on Commander Replay. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. We have one new Patreon supporter in Martin Gaverde. Martin, you are awesome. If you want to help support the channel and vote on which decks I play next, feel free to check out my Patreon at the link below. Who's going to fire off a bribery? No big deal. Welcome back, everyone. We are playing one of the worst Boros commanders ever printed today, and that is Anya Merciless Angel. Take a look at this opening hand. Oh, cool cards, but not enough land. Got a mulligan that. Uh, this is a little better. Not a lot of card draw, though, but spell shock. Ooh, no red mana? No red mana's a little rough. I might mulligan to six. Um, not a lot of value in this hand either. Yeah, I'm gonna mulligan that. That is the best so far. So we'll keep this. We gotta put one back. We've got four lands. Four lands does get us to, uh, Hedron Archive. But Creature or Skull Clamp, I think, is too good. I'm gonna put back the Sun Home. And just hope that we'll catch a land somewhere along the way to make up for that Hedron Archive. But I think, you know, Scab Clan and putting a Skull Clamp on it, if it gets shot, we'll draw a card. Should help us out pretty good, so yeah. Tap land for opponent, they're going to gain a life. Ooh, Manamo for opponent, that one's pretty good. And we draw into a Boros Charm on our first turn, play the Ameria, and we'll pass like that. So taking a look at our commander, we are playing Anya Merciless Angel. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four flying. Interesting abilities but often aren't very good. Let's take a look at them. So the first one says it gets plus three, plus three for each opponent whose life total is less than half their starting life total. So as soon as they hit 19, that ability will turn on. And then it says as long as an opponent's life total is less than half its starting life total, Anya becomes indestructible. Seems like it should be kind of cool, but in reality, it's actually really hard to get these abilities going. Some games will be different than others, like if there's two red decks at a table, then it's not terribly difficult to have everyone's life total start melting. But in reality, it does actually take quite a bit to get opponents to 19 life, which means that Anya is basically a 5-mana 4-4 flyer, and like, it's not the best. The other thing, too, is that if your opponents die, they leave the game, and you no longer get the ability. So you need to keep them between 1 and 19 life. We'll see what we can do with it today. That does bring it to our turn two. Let's drop in the Sacred Foundry tapped, and we'll play the Skull Clamp. Hope this sticks. But yeah, I've tried Anya a bunch over the years, and it just doesn't do that much, especially once you start talking about like more powerful settings, uh, more powerful decks. When people start getting into like combo, kill the entire table at once type of stuff, then Anya really isn't giving you very much. And uh, because of that, I do think it is one of the single worst Boros commanders. As a matter of fact, the other day I was testing out Munda, which I also think is one of the worst Boros commanders. But I was actually impressed with the deck. I did notice that, like, if you build a good deck around some of these bad commanders, that you can still have a decent amount of success, even if the commander isn't giving you that much. Um, just by having good cards in your 99, you can still make a deck that's very reasonable. Now, the thing is, you're always giving something up. Like, if you just put a different commander in the command zone, it'll just give you more, right? Like, having a good commander late in the game is, like, obviously valuable, so. Anyway, yeah. Ooh, we catch a Boros Signet. Okay. What are we doing? So, we could go, we could go straight to the Scab Clan Berserker. I don't necessarily want to do that without, um, being able to get the Skull Clamp on it. So, I think we can wait more, one more turn. So, that being the case, let's play the Mountain play the Boros Signet, get a little bit of ramp going, and we'll pass like that. What I noticed, too, is that when you have a bad commander like that, as it gets later into the game, if the board gets wiped, you don't have much left in play, you're trying to recast stuff, if you have cards in your hand at all, you're probably going to cast those and not your commander. Uh, because if your commander isn't great to begin with, adding two more mana to it does not feel good. And I would assume a little bit more of that with Anya, although... You know, speaking from my Munda experience, Anya gives you probably a little bit more in the late game than Munda does. Munda's ability is just, like, garbage. Uh, not to say that Anya's is great, but at least if it's late in the game and someone's got low life total, hopefully you're getting both of those abilities out of Anya, you hope. Some things coming in for opponents, so there is a Karlov of the Ghost Council in play. It's got two counters on it. Yeah, that's a pretty scary card. And there is a Heliod Suncrowned in play for the Mile opponent. Uh, and then a Sapphire Medallion for the Mono Blue opponent. Ooh, Patron of the Moon. Mayo coming into play. Sure. Opponent's going to fire off a bribery. No big deal. You know what's interesting is you don't see bribery as much as you used to. 
You know, I think for a while there, people got really down on creatures, and uh, that being the case, I think people stopped running bribery as much when, oh, that's a good creature. That's a Nyx Bloom Ancient. Yeah, now that they've printed some like really crazy creatures, bribery is a card that gains a lot of value. That is scary. We do not have an answer for that in this moment, but what we can do is drop a land, play our Scab Clan Berserker, a card that I really like, and just never seems to make enough room into a deck. Like, it's never so good that it's like... It's usually like the hundred and like fourth card for me, give or take, when I'm thinking about creatures that I want to put into a deck. And uh, finally found a home today, because I think you can get a lot of life loss on this, uh, more so than what you would just get from like something that's very aggressive and something that attacks a lot. So, swinging to Jenkinstein. But yeah, this is a really cool card. You know, once it's renowned, whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, it's going to do two damage to them. And we are renowned. The fact that it just comes in with haste, you can find an opening on your opponent, much like we saw with the Karlov right there, and just... We hit, now we have the ability, and as soon as they start casting non-creatures, they're going to lose some life. Now, as far as the Karlov is concerned, cool commander, one that you don't see as much of these days, but Karlov is repeatable removal. Probably the first thing they need, they need to shoot is this Nyx Bloom Ancient. They're going to drop down a Talisman. That Talisman's going to get them for two. All about that. They gain life from something. Oh, they have a Pristine Talisman in play. Okay. Yep, so whenever they tap the Pristine Talisman, they're going to gain one life. That seems pretty good. Two more counters on there. Let's take a look at Karlov, by the way. Two mana for a 2-2. Two -two. When you gain life, put two plus one plus one counters on it, pay a white and a black, remove six counters from it, exile target creature. Repeatable removal, pretty good. Uh, lots of life gain in black and white, so cool things to be doing with Karlov. I've definitely lost to it in the past. Haven't seen it in quite a few years at this point, but probably going to be needed against this Nyx Bloom Ancient right here. And I'm sure you could do like a pretty cool updated take on this thing uh, with a lot of the stuff they've printed more recently. You know, I'm thinking about like Authority of the Consoles and... Uh, Nope, there it is, Blind Obedience. I guess those aren't, like, crazy recent, but, you know, within the last, like, five-ish years, give or take. Yeah, stuff like that definitely seems really good for Karlov. And, you know, Aetherflux Reservoir is a card. It's been printed in the last five or so years. Oh, hey now, that's an Urbrask. Urbrask, real magic card. One that I need to run more. Our second opponent, by the way, is Milk and Cheese 1, piloting Mile the Anima. We've seen this deck a few times before. Uh, Sean's been trying to tune this deck up a bit. You know, for as much as I've seen it, I still really just feel like Mile does, just doesn't give you that much. I think I'm, I'm really on Team Atla Palani because it's just so slow. You know, similar to what we're doing in that, like, our commander doesn't give us much, I feel like Mile's kind of in that same boat. The sad part is that, like, Mile also wants to eat all of your mana and sometimes whiffs, where, you know, Anya's a flat five mana the first time you cast it, which is not amazing, but it's not terrible either. It's very reasonable. Where Mile is, yeah, that's a lot of mana to sink into that ability, and especially if it whiffs. There's a Makokoro. Yep. Wouldn't be sad if they activated the Makokoro. Getting triple the mana off this Nyx Bloom Ancient. There's the Makokoro. Excellent. There's a Blasphemous Act. How long can we wait on the Blasphemous Act? That is the question. Although, eh, Karlov can probably just shoot that thing next turn. So yeah, we can probably wait on the Blasphemous Act. K.O. wants cards, so he's going to use Manamo to untap the Makokoro. And uh, looks like he may go for it again. Yep, there it is. Ooh, that's a harsh mentor. Yeah, digging it, digging it. This is one, I haven't used it a ton. I've seen it here and there. In some situations, it can be good where I think it gains value. When you get to a more high power setting where people are really trying to like abuse abilities and combo... You start seeing something like Selvala's, and one of my friends had a Yisan deck and did like 28 damage to himself in a turn with Harsh Mentor, and then died because he was at like 6 life or something. So, it's an interesting card. It's not great everywhere, but if you're playing against people that are looking to repeatedly abuse an activated ability, <laughs> puts a lot of damage on them really quickly, and like, it's not exactly the type of card you want to shoot. Like, you're not looking to spend removal on a Harsh Mentor, so can be pretty good. We do draw the Rolling Earthquake. Probably going to hang on to that for a little bit as well. Let's play the Plains. Play Hedron Archive. Oh, that comes in tapped. Yes, it does. Well, we still have the mana we need. Cool. Usually that gets me. Usually when I misplay into a Blind Obedience, I punt the entire turn, but <laughs> this time it's going to work out for us. No real harm. Love it. <laughs> play the Harsh Mentor. We can do some attacking. Uh, I guess we attack into Sean real quick. Our final opponent, by the way, is Chaotix2075, piloting Patron of the Moon, one that you don't see so much of these days. 
but it is a 7 mana 5-4 with Moonfolk offering. Costs less to cast for the mana cost of each Moonfolk you sacrifice. Has flying and says, pay one, put up to two lands from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. Yeah, that ability's pretty good. Uh, I've definitely lost to this in the past. I remember, like, the mana doubler got me. I forget exactly how. Might have been, like, an Enter the Infinite kind of thing. But this Nyx Blue Mansion, I think, is exactly where they want to be. So, that's a thing. Uh, Karlov gonna come our way. Yep, seems fair. Who I don't think I put Blind Obedience in the deck, and I probably should, because that's another way to burn down life totals. Our past turn is a great illustration of our commander, by the way. So, like, our choices were... We could have cast our commander this turn... But casting Anya right here just doesn't give us that much. Everyone's still in the 30s, and we basically get a 5-mana 4-4 four, four flyer. It's fine. It does not blow you away. Uh, here comes a Mirog. Ooh. <laughs> you wonder how you melt life totals? Mirog. I'm sure Sean's got some feelings about his uh, Nyx Bloom Ancient. Ooh. Hey, now. So the Blind Obedience makes Mirog come in tapped. Morag does have haste from the Urabrask, so Blind Obedience doing some work right here. Blind Obedience, so good against red decks. Things with haste just get shot down. Urabrask into Karlov, and Mile just going to swing in our way. Sure, put a little damage on us. Do have a reasonable amount of life gain in the deck, usually a little bit more than I roll with, because I am aware that this deck may burn our own life total with Rolling Earthquake and cards like that. But yeah, in today's world of Commander, where like... You know, everyone wants to cast their commander early and start generating value. This Karlov, for example, just get it in there, start gaining life. That's not what this commander does. Like, it just doesn't give you much in the early game. It's It'll give you a little bit later in the game, and it's mostly just that, like, it's a reasonably hard-to-kill, decently-sized flyer, which, not against that, but generally you just want a little bit more out of your commander. Okay, I was going to activate that Makokoro. Yep. Harsh Mentor is going to get him. Perfect. I never get to hit people with Harsh Mentor that much, so this is very exciting for me. <laughs> we draw a land. Lands are good. Moonbrow Illusionist. It's a flyer, and it says, Pay two, return a land you control to its owner's hand. Target land becomes the basic land type of your choice until end of turn. Looks like it's in there just for its Moonfolk status, but I don't know. Maybe there's some land trick. Uh, I don't know. Seems weird. I guess with enough mana, you could, like, turn all your lands into the swamps, and that'd be a problem. Uh, and then have the mana to, like, replay all of their lands with the commander ability. Seems possible. We draw a return to dust. It's interesting. It's interesting. You know, I'd like to hit the Blind Obedience at some point, and the Heliod at some point. Probably also want to hit the Sapphire Medallion at some point. Those have been known to cause problems. Ooh, hey now. That's an enchantment. All right, maybe we're playing this right now. Question is, what are we hitting? Start by playing the land. So, Sean and I had this exact conversation the other day. There's no walking ballista in this deck, and he was talking about playing this Heliods as a bodyguard, because people see it, and then they get nervous that you have the ballista combo. But because he doesn't, and it's not like a life gain deck per se, I'm actually tempted to not shoot it. Well, it can gain life gain. It can gain life link, though. But, like, blind obedience is also a thing. Tough choice. Heliod or blind obedience? Blind Obedience fuels up Karlov. Yeah, Blind Obedience fuels up Karlov quite a bit. Okay, I think I talked myself into Blind Obedience. But realistically, both are great choices right here. Do we have a follow-up play? That's four mana. I think we can cast our commander. Yeah, guess we do that. Uh, this is also a situation where I don't like Crush Contraband because we need to blow up two enchantments. These are both enchantments, and Crush Contraband does not do that. So generally, if I'm two colors or less, I'll go Return to Dust. If I am three colors or more, I'll probably go Crush Contraband just because the mana costs do matter. Chaotix doesn't think so. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I think we're about to lose our Skull Clamp. Actually, maybe not. So he's going to Narset's Reversal. Yeah, that's kind of bad. That's kind of bad. Copying the Return to Dust. Let's see where he goes now. Going to go for our Signet. Well, let's be professional and tap some mana. At least he didn't go over the Skull Clamp. That's the one I need to hang on to. Jank has some feelings. He's going to play an Utter End. Ooh, nice. Targeting the Nyx Bloom Ancient, which will trigger Blind Obedience, Karlov, and Scab Clan Berserker. Uh, the original trigger was off of the Pristine Talisman. Oh, yeah, we got a little stack battle going right here. <laughs> Just trying to resolve... Ooh, that's a twin cast. Yeah, this one's going to be bad. So now, I don't know, probably Skull Clamp and... Uh... Heliod about to go down? What's he target? Ooh, targeting Heliod and Pristine Talisman. That actually works out pretty well for us. Yeah, a little bit of a stack. Extort trigger. 
Opponent pays. Karlov gets a counter on it. Two counters. Second Karlov trigger. Scab Clan burns everyone. Nyx Bloom going down. And the final return to dust <laughs> resolves. So, oh, why didn't that get exiled? I thought that one got targeted somewhere. Huh. Strange. And Karlov is huge. Oh, there's something we should think about is that letting Karlov live means that soon it'll be out of range, although I think all of their life gain is gone. Not to say they won't have more. Maybe we can let it go for a turn. I think we put a little slap on KO right here because... Ooh, we gotta be careful of uh, Mirog, though. Mirog's the type of thing that can just end you. Oh, it's gonna... Uh, Anya's gonna come in tapped. Yep, that's a thing. Wish Anya came in untapped. Uh, I am gonna poke into Sean. I know we could swing into KO for 6 and put him to 21, and then, like, if he casts a spell, he'll go below, but... I need to leave this back because of Mirog. Mirog is just too much power. I don't want to rely completely on Karlov shooting Mirog. Hopefully they will, but I want to have contingency in place if not. And being where we are right now, I'm going to block with the Scab Clan just to uh, draw the cards. So Opponent cracks a fetch, gets him with the Harsh Mentor. Nice. Tick down that life total. I mean, they're at 29. They'd be much higher if all of our little things haven't been getting them. Sun Titan, you say? Get back the fetch land. Comes in tapped. Crack it again. Crack it again. <laughs> Hasn't done it yet. They do have a 10-10. Nice. 10-10 going into KO. This hits. This will put him below 20. Boom. KO down to 17. 16 commander damage. Anya now has plus 3, plus 3, and indestructible. All very nice. One thing that I didn't go in on with this deck is you could do like an Odric. And I think indestructible is also on, what's the other one? Concerted effort. You could do that kind of thing. Honestly, Odric's probably fine because it's a single card. You might be able to get the other one too. I just didn't include them. Uh, I was trying to work around with a lot of the burn stuff. If I could rebalance the deck just a teeny bit more, I might try to get those things in and give Team Indestructible. That could be kind of cool. But there's other ways to do that as well. Uh, there's an enchantment that gives you Indestructible when you go to combat in the Heeries Machination, I think. Um, there's other Indestructible creatures, the Gods, Tajik. That's definitely one way that you could go with it. I chose to focus on some of these uh, hate bear type things, some of the mass burn stuff. So just kind of ran out of room. Got a decent number of equipment in the deck to generate value. If I could free up a few equipment slots, then I could probably make room for those things. But the fact that like it doesn't have this ability all the time makes it sort of like, uh, you don't always know what you're getting. And that's not the best. Opponent going on the attack. Yep. So do we... I think we take the first one. Assumingly, they'll play a land and get another combat afterwards. and Because they'll be bigger in the second one. But also, this 4-2 keeps Mile and Urabrask from coming our way. <laughs> K.O. said, Uncle K.O. needs to get the belt and teach this whippersnapper a lesson. Yep. Yep. There's a great engine to play, by the way. We should be very scared of that. Be very, very scared. Still have a return to dust, though. It's exciting. No extra land. They did not have the, uh, the landfall trigger. That's surprising. Didn't expect that. Uh, this turn, I'm thinking, like, Boros Charm Blasphemous Act is probably the place to be, if everything holds up. A little bit of open mana over there, reasons to be nervous. Karlov's also a reason to be nervous. Oh, that's a spell twine. Ew. Bribery and Utter End. Utter End, hopefully on the Mirage. Great Henge wouldn't be a terrible target. Uh, he's gonna Teferi's Protect. He's thinking, nope. That does present some problems now. Probably not gonna Blasphemous Act because of that. Okay, we have another counter spell. Oh, that's also bad because Utter End probably coming our way now. What's this one? The Bribery? Yeah, they also can't be targeted with the Bribery. It's not great. It's not great. Uh, Scab Clan Berserker getting them. Yeah. Probably just going to die to the Scab Clan. Shoots the Karlov. Ooh, I wouldn't have done that. Karlov is removal for that stuff. KO says it's supposed to be a landfall deck, not mono blue BS. Well, found the BS portion of it. <laughs> that's what happens when you play mono blue. Sorry, mono blue players. <laughs> you annoy everyone to death. To be fair, though, he's at eight. And Harsh Mentor, Scab Clan Berserker. So, like, casting spells, not great for him. Hopefully there's no Elish Norn or something ridiculous like that. That'd be not great for him. Uh, Kambal. Kambal is a legit magic card for him right now. Kambal is a legit magic card for us also, because that's going to help get our opponent's life totals nice and low. Uh, I would like instant speed interaction, because this is all a problem. Lantax, you say? Well, I guess we're playing the Lantax. Kambal is going to get us. Yep. I mean, I guess we could just, like, kill KO. Doesn't really seem necessary, though. We should leave that back, as that's an indestructible blocker. We can move the Skull Clamp over to the Harsh Mentor. 
I kind of like I like the Scab Clan Berserker more than I like the Harsh Mentor, even though Harsh Mentor has been doing things for us. I mean, maybe we're just not going anywhere. Maybe like Mirog is a reason to not attack anything. I think Mir uh yeah, I think Mirog is a reason to not attack anything. Pass the turn, because we can Boros Charm and make our stuff indestructible too. So that seems valuable. If nothing else, maybe we crack the Hedron Archive, but Ramp is good. I feel reasonable about our mana. Might feel not as good about it with uh, Hedron Archive gone. Yeah, I'm just going to chill. We're just going to chill. Jank said he missed a trigger somewhere. He accidentally autoed something. He said he's also land flooded. It's not great. It's not great. He's got a Sun Titan. No cards in Graveyard, though. Yeah, Mirog is just terrifying. Did you guys expect me to not attack right here? Because... If it were, like, anything other than Mirog, I'd probably attack with something. But this thing's ability to just end you is insane. So, yeah. At least the Teferi's Protection's gone. Came down at a time where it, like, wasn't game-endingly backbreaking, so that's nice. But definitely stop the play that I was looking to make, which is these two. Don't be a mob rule. It's a Stonehoof Chieftain. That's pretty bad. Stonehoof Chieftain is pretty bad. One's gonna gain some life, counter with Heliod, yep. Means that now we can't kill their stuff in combat. Also, what's it give a trample? Ugh, trample. Gross. Gross. I used to lose this card a lot, and I don't see it nearly as much as I used to. I guess at 8 mana, it's not the most efficient thing ever, but if you're playing green Stompy, it's generally good enough. Indestructible and trample. Pretty serious stuff. Comes in with haste, they draw with great henge, yep. I forget what happens with Anya when players die. I don't know if the abilities continue to trigger for her or not. There's the landfall. Did it in his first main phase, though. That is the incorrect time to do it. Might catch a break on that. And that is one of those things you got to be careful of with Mirog, that the way that it's worded is kind of weird, and you need to play that land in the second main phase, otherwise you don't get the untap. And opponent will probably uh, be very upset in a moment when they figure that out. But good news for us, although let's see who survives. Opponent's going to draw with the Arch of Ors, because the Harsh Mentor is going to get them. They're down to 22. Cast a spell. Cast a spell. <laughs> Mirog our way, of course. The Stonehoof Chieftain our way, of course. Trample and Indestructible for the team, of course. Don't want to forget that. It's a lot of damage. Let's block Mirog, I guess. I'm going to take the 10. Uh, do we want to take the 10? I think KO is probably going to die. Actually, no. KO is going to survive. Hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure what happens with Anya once the damage is tracked on her. Does that mean that the rest of the damage tramples over? Oh, down to eight. Ouch. Where's the lifelink? Need the lifelink. Trample and indestructible. Ugh. Big one our way. Yep. Uh, Anya up to 10-10 now, so it can... Even if it doesn't work the way I want it to, should be able to soak more damage. Mile our way. Mirog at KO. Urbrask. Things trigger again. Eh, we've got quite a bit coming our way. We're going to double block on the Mirog. Oh, man, so this is tricky. So, like, I'm, I'm torn between saving the Boros Charm and getting rid of the Boros Charm because Anya is a 10-10. So double strike is 20. We just need plus one, and that's Commander Lethal. We got to throw everything in front, I mean, for sure. Yeah, I think we give up on the other two. They're playing mostly creatures and not activating very many abilities, so these aren't doing that much. Uh, actually, even beyond that, we, if this doesn't block all of the damage, like if, if it's not blocking the seven that's already tracked, then we're actually still dead, which means we need to crack the Hedron Archive and pray for something good. Crack the Hedron Archive. Nope. Any enchantments over here? Not that I can see. They're probably going to die. I doubt this works the way that I want it. Yep, down we go. Opponents survive at nine and one. Yep, that was frustrating. Uh, the problem there is that KO shooting Karlov, Karlov couldn't deal with Mirog. And then we were okay up until Stonehoof Chieftain. Stonehoof Chieftain is a ridiculous card. It's gotten me so many times. It's so hard to stop that. Like, if they weren't indestructible, then we could have, like, Boros Charmed something. We could have Boros Charmed our commander, and everything that would have swung into us would have just died. And, like, no big deal. So... Yeah, that was frustrating. So a couple things we saw, like Anya, it's not the best. It doesn't do that much in the early game. Like, it's just a creature, basically. And then in the late game, it's easy enough for people to work around it. Kozilek for opponent, this should do it. Yeah, so a combination of things that got us to Fairy's Protection at the right time. Couldn't use our sorcery speed removal, because I was about to blow the board up. Uh, KO shooting the Karlov was a really bad idea. Yeah, things just didn't go our way.
So down we go. Down John takes it. Okay, so that game. Uh, before we get to the wrap-up, first thing I want to mention is this video was filmed before Commander Legends. Uh, I'm now doing the wrap-up in the present day because I've played this deck four or five more times since this filming, and there's a few interesting things I want to talk about. So this is actually one of the best showings for this deck. The other games after it were very painful. Uh, they often involved getting stuck, not having cards, not being able to do stuff, not being able to impact the board, eating removal, all kinds of other stuff. They were very painful games to play through, and I did not have a good time doing so. So this is one of the best showings I've had with this deck, but also, Sean, who played his Mile deck, I played a bunch of Mile in the past six months, and Mile has a lot of similarities to Anya, which I'll talk about in a second, but this was actually one of the best showings for Sean's Mile deck. And I think a big thing here is that none of the board wipes actually went off. Also, he played the Teferi's Protection at the perfect time, because if we were able to get that board wipe off and clear the board, we would have actually had a chance in the game, especially with the Boros Charm. But the fact that he took away all of our sorcery speed removal with the Teferi's Protection just basically took us right out of it, and then KO using the Utter End to shoot the Karlov. That Karlov needed to stay to be able to deal with the Morag and the Stonehoof Chieftain. Once that went down, that kind of doomed us. So, like I said, one of the best showings I've ever had with Anya, and one of the best showings I've seen with Mile, and I did play quite a bit of Mile over the past few months. But the other thing I want to talk about, too, is that I played three or four games with Munda while I was revisiting some old Boros commanders that I haven't touched in years and years, and even though Munda is not good, I think Anya is so much worse, and I found Munda much more fun to play. So, like, if you build Ally Tribal around Munda, at least it's new, it's different, it's a different feel than Anya, which is, like, just this super generic Boros burn deck that also isn't very good. And so, I know there's a lot of people out there that like Anya. I know I have at least one Patreon that really likes Anya, and there's probably a few more people out there as well, but it is a hard mode commander, right? So, here's the thing you're always competing with. Anya is five mana. For one more mana, you get Aurelia, and Aurelia does so much more. For two more mana, you get Gisela, and Gisela is probably one of the greatest burn commanders out there, at least for Boros burn, anyway. So, you know, those are two things you're dealing with. If you want value, you have Gerard. If you want Overrun, you've got Winota now. Like, there are so many different commanders, some of which are cheaper than Anya, that are just way more powerful and give you so much more. Uh, the other thing, too, that I want to talk about is, so I've played four or five games with Anya, and it worked out to something like 45 turns of magic. I had uptime on her ability for, like, maybe four turns. And a few of those turns were actually in this game. So it's actually really difficult to get that ability going. And just to pile insult to injury, the worst thing about it is that if your opponent dies, they leave the game, and you no longer get the bonus from them. So you're trying to keep all of your opponents between 1 and 19 life, and it is a miserable task to do that. And as the Boros deck, generally you want to get rid of players whenever you have an opportunity to do so. Because the thing you don't want to happen is you don't want removal coming your way. Or you don't want someone going over the top of you. So it's just easier to control the board. And easier to control what's going to happen when there are less players at the table. So yeah, Anya is just painful. And easier to control what's going to happen when there are less players at the table. So, yeah, Anya is just painful. And the comparison that I wanted to make is that with Mile, I played something like 33 turns of Mile, and I activated her ability like three times. Anya kind of falls into that same space of 40-something turns of Anya, and her ability was active maybe four turns. Mile, 30-something turns, ability was activated maybe three times. Like, you're just not getting much out of these commanders. So they have a lot of similarity in that sense of they're useful like one-tenth of the time or something like that. So, so yeah, Anya was truly painful for me to sit through the four or five games that I played with it. Don't let me stop you if you want to play it, but if you want something fun that's going to feel good to play, I don't think Anya is it. I will steer you in another direction every single time. For me, I do think it takes the title of the single worst Boros commander. Uh, with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hey guys, next time you purchase cards, if you want to support me and my LGS, be sure to check out MothershipATX.com and use the promo code REPLAY to save 15% on your next order. And if you can't find what you're looking for, you can use the TCG Affiliate Player link. All links are in the description below.